got caught by uh, COVID and travel restrictions and so forth. So, Dr. Fatima Ebrahimi, I was really looking forward to having her in Tucson uh, coming from Princeton. But uh, Dr. Ebrahimi, you got the floor. Uh, really, thank you, Stephen, and thank you for uh, inviting me to uh, talk about this technology. Uh, and um, uh, I wish I was there and meeting you all. <laughs> and uh, so I'm plasma physicist, uh, so it's a little bit, we are switching a little bit different. Uh, plasma physicist from uh, Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory and uh, um, and uh, Princeton University, and I will be talking about an original um, concept that I invented in 2017 about reconnecting plasmoid uh, propulsion. Um, and just a little bit uh, clear the, um, if there is any confusion that I'm not affiliated with the uh, with the group that yesterday nicely mm -hmm. presented. Uh, so for any kind of uh, deep space propulsion, uh, we know that the space and fuel efficiency is really uh, critical. And um, for this kind of high delta V, um, uh, um, any kind of mission, you really need high trust electromagnetic propulsion with high exhaust velocity of tens to hundreds of kilometers per second. Um, and uh, so the question is that how would you, in realistically, how can we actually achieve that? How can we break the boundaries? And as we heard so many nice talks, how can we um, get to those kind of speeds that, um, that we can actually um, go for, um, for much deeper space? Mm, propulsion system. And uh, next, please. Interesting. So the movie showed. <laughs> it didn't show on my, my computer. So uh, for that kind of a speed, actually, we don't need to go too far. And um, uh, we can look at our sun, which uh, is actually producing a lot of magnetic energy um, under the surface of sun. Um, because of the relative motions of the plasma motion, you will get a lot of magnetic energy buildup, which is not only magnetic energy. Interestingly, it's a lot of twisted magnetic field lines, linked magnetic field lines that are being generated in some zone of the sun called convectic zone. And sun cannot handle that. You know, you have so much buildup of magnetic energy and wants to get rid of it. So, um, and this twisted linkage of the field lines, we call it magnetic helicity coming from helical. So this magnetic helicity wants to get rid of that buildup of what is making constantly. So how does it do that? That's why actually um, flares, you know, kind of finds a way to inject these, um, these um, kind of magnetic helicity into the surface of the of the sun, and then to do the flares, the process we call magnetic reconnection. Um, when these field lines come together, and then the whole magnetic energy is being converted to kinetic, mostly kinetic energy and other forms, and sun releases a lot of you know plasma and particles with a velocity of hundreds and thousands of kilometers per second. So, so, so this concept that I will talk today is exactly that. It's a controlled way, version of that, which is the combination of the um, injection of the magnetic helicity and the process of magnetic reconnection when we directly, directly actually magnetic energy is being converted to kinetic energy. So it's a form of propulsion that for the first time you actually get kinetic energy that is that is being generated from directly from magnetic energy. And next, please. So and then, uh, so this reconnecting plasma drive, the concept that I will talk, be talking today. So of course, it's been because I'm also a fusion plasma physicist. It's come from um, or inspired uh, by fusion, but also it could work with different uh, power sources, um, solar powered and nuclear electric fission 
powered and also nuclear fusion. So it could work with that. And then it depends, the trust that is going to produce, it depends on, on the power that actually it's provided to this propulsion system. Next. Uh, so, so there are two, um, two physical mechanisms that needs to join to, for, this, uh, for this propulsion system to happen. And one is, as I said, is the magnetic reconnection, which in the middle you will see that the oppositely directed field lines, magnetic field lines, um, uh, when the, field li the magnetic field is get annihilated, so it, um, it kind of gets reconnected and you will get you know, uh, kinetic energy. But what we discovered a few years ago, including myself, that um, there is some kind of a pl plasma re regime that actually you can jump uh, from these kind of a reconnection regime that was really slow to kind of fast reconnection regime. And that was the regime we call it uh, reconnecting plasmoid um, regime that, that these field lines when they come together the more the faster you kind of these field lines they come together they break and then they, they make more and more round objects magnetic objects that we call it plasmoids and then they can be bigger and bigger plasmoids can form and they can actually um, the, the plasmoids can carry a lot of momentum um, which is usually we call it alpha in velocity, carry a lot of momentum and kind of, and kind of ex exit in terms of the kind of exhaust velocity from the, the location um, reconnection side at X point. And so that's the basic of it, that, that how we can actually find, it's kind of a new fundamental physics that we, we discovered in plasma physics, that we are in the, if we are in this regime of parameter, we can actually get really, really high, fast magnetic reconnection in these plasmas. So how do we actually uh, make this kind of reconnection uh, sites that we get this plasmoid reconnection? And that's true, that's the whole point of this concept that, um, that I'm going to talk, that I'm talking is the, the helicity injection concept. And that, that means that like what I showed in the sun, you actually uh, need to inject a lot of magnetic helicity and there are places in the plasma that actually you have this reconnection site, fast reconnection site that you can get the momentum. And the, um, the um, injection of the magnetic helicity is not something new. I mean, we knew about it since 1959 by Alphen. In his experiments, it actually created uh, this kind of a solar type magnetic rings in, with his team in his experiment. And since then, amazingly, in the experiment, in different configuration, you know, toroidal, spherical, linear, for different reason, in fusion plasmas, we have been doing injection of the um, helicity in our devices for mostly for confining the plasma or actually um, generating current for fusion. But so far, no one has actually had been proposing a practical um, application of this helicity injection for space propulsion. And that's what this system is, that with the rec magnetic reconnection, you can combine that with um, helicity, and that's how you can get the, uh, the kind of real high trust and high um, ISP with this technique. Um, and next, please. And to the left is the schematic of this uh, propulsion system or a connecting plasmoid drive that by carefully configuring these magnetic coil like the sun or like the um, alphane experiment, you can actually inject a lot of flux. And what is but what you need to do by this configuring in this uh, coil, you actually provide uh, some reconnection site that that uh, the flux that you have in, been injecting, it can actually you get rid of it, like what the sun does, you get rid of it by the process of fast magnetic reconnection. And the flux then interestingly become like a, an elongated form of the structure or round, we call it plasmoid or, you know, um, 
compact and leave it. And since it's the whole plasma leaving the device, it produces a lot of trust and also it produces a lot of high ISP. And with the exhaust velocity is about, you know, 20 to 500 kilometer per second. And the nice thing is that also this, this is a plasma and um, it has been shown in this paper that you can actually um, run this uh, propulsion system with gases, including hydrogen, even, even light gases. Next, please. And then, so how do we um, actually know that this works? And that's uh, been by doing really realistic simulations. And um, so the simulation has been done um, in a truster configuration in the largest or biggest um, uh, supercomputing con at NERSC. And um, all of the simulation that I show, it's based on the, on the, the schematic that, 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 that uh, I showed in the previous slide. Showed, uh, so with realistic simulation, please next, so we find a very um, high exhaust velocity through the process of fast magnetic reconnection. And there are two plots here are shown that shows that uh, how important the uh, fast magnetic reconnection is for producing high ISP in this system. So to the left is just the uh, conventional plasma accelerator like plasma guns, etc., that you will get some velocity. But to the right is when you actually combine it with fast magnetic reconnection and you get an order of magnitudes higher specific impulse. So you actually can achieve very high exhaust velocity. So it's only not injecting um, magnetic flux is not the only way you actually need to have both for this to happen. Um, next, please. And then here is also again more and more, you know, detail really in detail you have, we have explored this concept that does it depend on the model that we are actually simulating. If it's a um, fluid type models, MHD or more kinetic type models, if you include more kinetic behavior of this plasma, is it robust or not? And if, and that's exactly is that it's robust, you can actually get this formation of these plasmas with high uh, velocity. So the, the physics is actually, really um, the same for these different types of um, uh, physics model that being incorporated in the simulation. And again, the trick here is that it's all based on the fundamental plasma physics that we discovered in the last few years. You have to pass this threshold to be in a plasma parameter regime to, be, to get to this fast reconnection um, regime to get this high exhaust velocity. Next, please. Um, and again, the cyclic behavior of this formation of these plasmoids are important. Usually lot, some of these propulsion systems, they have this uh, detachment problem, but here actually nature and the field lines, because of the process of magnetic reconnection, it detaches itself. So the detachment is not a problem and you get this cyclic behavior, cyclic uh, formation of this form of, form of these plasmoids um, with, a period, with a periodicity. Um, and that's as long as you have this static electric field available. And, um, uh, and of course you can actually program your voltage and make it pulse. That's also an option that's, that's I have, studied in a few years before that next uh, and then and then again this is a this just shows what we started with our son yes and uh, uh, that it's from realistic simulation that um, you see these twisted field lines that generated in the real in in this 3D simulation momentum carrying um, a structure plasmoids that are formed. So you provide, you need a specific uh, coil configuration that produces this um, momentum carrying a structure and leave the device, you, you know, leave the plates at X points with a high velocity, these plasmoids. And it's all twisted. So you, you actually, nature makes Sun makes its own magnetic field, we provide it and convert it to kinetic energy through this process of magnetic reconnection. And next, please. Um, and it's definitely, this is really high, highly scalable. And this is not something that is projected. All of these points that it's seeing, the ISP is, um, is uh, really 
uh, numerical points re re from realistic simulation that you see that you can achieve highest speed and as long as you provide more and more magnetic field. So it just scales nicely with magnetic field. And also the, tr the thrust calculation, which has been done in this paper also shows that it scales nicely with magnetic field. So the scalability of the um, higher uh, specific impulse and also the uh, trust is really important and is a scales nicely. And ne next, please. The whole thing is inspired again in an experiment that I was working, a fusion experiment. So, and we made this blobs or plasmoids through plasmoid through connection. So this has this camera images to the right shows that we have the proof of principle and routinely we made that for creating a startup current in these experiments. And the simulation predicted that. And there is an uh, image, but that's supposed to be in the paper um, uh, a few years ago, the, the, the movie of how actually these structures lives and produce with high velocity of 20 to 30 kilometers per second is, has been produced. And next, so, and that's experimental. And again, where is it sitting, this concept? Uh, so we have the specific, you know, more, more powerful and higher speed and then the, the purple area is where, uh, where the propulsion system sits that it could have hundreds of newton, you could produce hundreds of newton given the power, of course, it scales a bit power and uh, we could have, you could have higher specific impulse um, and it's a complementary that it, you can achieve higher. And there is no limit to it. As I said, it's a scalable with magnetic field. Next. And then, uh, so the missions, so scalability is always come that you can actually go with short to long range space mission. Uh, so as I said, if it's low power, it could be solar. For low power missions, uh, solar mm, uh, powered, mm, it could be nuclear electric and nuclear fusion. That's what's in my heart. That's what I want. It happens, and um, and there are different missions. For example, it's um, uh, you can go to the moons of the Jupiter, and uh, if it's fission powered, with alpha is an important parameter here, with a payload uh, in a matter of few years. If it's fusion powered, of course, with a budget of ten times larger, um, larger power, you can actually do it much shorter time. So different um, missions are possible. Next, please. Oh, and this is a summary, which, which is that the reconnecting plasma drive is highly scalable. And so it's the first time that actually we are saying that we can get um, a specific impulse directly from magnetic field through this process of um, providing the helicity and reconnecting fast plasma reconnection. And this compactness is really important because you don't want to be have a complicated system, you know, with antennas of all the things carrying. So it's a simple component of it is important. And the fuel is also flexible propellant is important. And you can run with, you know, lighter um, gases and the scalability, of course, and it's pattern painting. So for uh, by Princeton University, if you um, want to license, you need to contact Princeton University and uh, and uh, one more thing, I'm getting that I should stop. That uh, uh, so it's also so you can contact Princeton University and this project is um, is grant funded right now currently at PPPL and there's a couple also grant pending, uh, but. We recently, currently, we've been talking to private investors and please contact me for uh, making this happen in, for, in reality. And thank you really for your attention. And my email should be there, but sorry about it, last name at pppl.gov or last name at princeton.edu. Thanks a lot. And I'm happy to answer questions. So a lot of the questions that I actually got were answered in the course of the um, rest of the talk. So can you comment on the experimental challenges with realizing the fast magnetic reconnection? Are there any engineering benefits uh, versus think, uh, other propulsion methods? Engineering benefit uh, is the uh, simplicity of it. The components that I show is it's we have done it in the experiments. We have the proof of principle so, and the compactness of it. Uh, the, uh, the the challenges is that 
Uh, it's been routinely done in the experiment, not for propulsion, of course, needs to be needs to be looked needs to be built. And um, I mean, challenges is that do we need to replace plates? You know, how often we need to replace them? You know, as you get, you know, these plasmoid formations, but it's kind of the magnetic configuration and uh, it's electric and the electric field, they are all, the fact that it's a static is also important, but you can also control it in a way. We know how, we have done these things a lot. We know how to control plasmas through, you know, pulsing it and, and all of that, yeah. All right, uh, I think we're gonna have to cut off questions there, but uh, you know, we've got your email and in case people have others. Dr. Abrahami, thank you so much for doing thanks this, we appreciate it. And I wish I was there. Thanks a lot for the interview.